disinfected by the lights as the children play just wash away Hi, my name is Stevie and I like to write songs. There's been some chatter on the viewer comments on my videos that people would like to see me look at more 70s progressive rock type stuff, early Genesis and that kind of thing. And I mean, I'm all up for that because Marillion are one of my favorite all time bands. So today I thought I'd set myself a challenge and try and write a song in the style of Pink Floyd. Now the first thing that comes to mind when I think about Pink Floyd is Comfortably Numb, one of the greatest rock songs of all time with possibly one of the greatest solos of all time in it. So I'm really setting the bar quite high today and I'm going to try something a wee bit different because there's quite a lot of things about Pink Floyd's songwriting style that I really admire and I would like to absorb some of that into my songwriting. So let's get started. I guess if you're watching this channel, you probably don't need an introduction to who Pink Floyd are. They're probably one of the most successful, influential rock bands of all time. For me personally, when I think about Pink Floyd, I think about epic ballads that are very atmospheric. They play the types of songs that people get out their phones or their lighters and light up an entire stadium and the atmosphere is absolutely stunning. For me, it's all about profound, introspective lyrics and of course the guitar hero guitar solo but when you listen to a lot of Pink Floyd you start to realize that they've got a very particular way of writing songs that's quite minimalistic you realize that they can manage to say a lot by saying very little for example one of my favorite lines that I've ever heard in a song is a line in the song comfortably numb when I was a child I had a fleeting glimpse out of the corner of my eye such a beautiful piece of poetry it means so much but when you break it down, it's a very simple, straightforward little line, but it has that Pink Floyd characteristic profoundness. If you listen to some Pink Floyd, you'll realize that they have quite straightforward harmony, sort of like a chord per bar, which is a type of music that's very good for writing on acoustic guitar. And I thought I would try and show that today because so far all the songs that I've written, I've sort of written on electric guitars or I've written as a response to lyrics and so on. But a very common way that I write songs is just sitting with an acoustic guitar and trying to come up with chords and vocal melodies. So we'll do that today and we'll try and get most of the song written just on the acoustic guitar. And then next week, we'll start looking at trying to build up the production, adding in drums and electric guitars and so on. So today it'll be mostly acoustic. So it'll be a nice, interesting change for the channel. Let's see if we can get started. Right, so when I say that Pink Floyd writes songs that sound like they could be written on acoustic guitar, this is the kind of thing that I mean here. You know, that pretty much is all of the backing track in Comfortably Numb. That's what I want to try and do today, have basically a finished song written before we even start recording any instruments. And I want to try and use the types of chords that Pink Floyd use, quite basic straightforward chords and usually in some kind of minor key and then maybe going major for the chorus or whatever. The kind of thing I'm thinking about at the minute is maybe A minor. I mean, it's a straightforward enough chord sequence, but it's the kind of thing would be common enough in this type of 70s prog. And I'm not really going to overthink the chords too much at this stage. Um, maybe we could replace them for something a wee bit more interesting as we start building up the arrangement. I want to keep the vocal melody quite low so that I've got somewhere to go with my limited vocal range. So I kind of know that once we get up to these notes here that I'm sort of at the top of my range so I want to start off down sort of 
here somewhere around these notes so that I have the ability it's somewhere else to go up here somewhere so if the plan is to start down here somewhere one of the things that I think is nice and jumps out straight away is if we're playing A minor and to C that note stays so it might be good to base the melody around that na, 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 na. you know na, 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 na. so we're still on it's almost like a one note melody there's some extra notes in there but we're we're singing this E all the time over all three chords na, 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 na. Don't let the editing fool you here. Um, I've gone through about 15 different versions of this before I come up with this. I don't want people to think that the first idea that comes into my head is the one that works. If it didn't work, then I didn't film it. It's only when I have decent ideas that I actually turn the camera back on and let you hear the ideas. So it's very important to understand that you should just be patient with these things. Try different chords, sit and noodle about until eventually you find something that does feel like you're starting to move and starting to work on it and play it over and over again and like the sound of it and like where it's going. And then, you know, you've, start, you've started writing a song. So that's what I did and that's what I came up with. And, you know, I already have a wee line that keeps coming in my head every time I'm humming the melody. I think the second time round, Time pretends to have no memory. Time pretends to have no memory. It's Pink Floyd-esque, so that's cool. I think I'll try and base my lyrics around this idea. Quite often there's a bit of nostalgia in Pink Floyd songs where they do talk about their childhoods and their memories and bring these into the songs about lessons they've learnt in life through childhood experiences or traumas that they've experienced that ripple forward through their life. That's what we'll try and base the lyrics on. At this stage we've got very little to go on. We've got a basic chord sequence and we've got a single line. Time pretends to have no memory. But I, ha I know how the vocal melody is going to go in my mind, so I can start putting together some ideas. I know what the harmonic and rhythmic sequence of the words should be. I had the will to make things right. Maybe it's better this way. Just walk away. Time pretends to have no memory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's nice there, going up a wee bit there. I had the will to make things right. Maybe it's better this way. Just walk away. Time pretends to have no memory Time will be the one bearing witness mm. Time will be the one bearing witness At the... Well, you can't really say at the end of time because that's time We're anthropomorphizing time here So we can't really have an end of time Time will be the one bearing witness At the, at the end of the world when you're dead, when it's all over, at the crossroads. I will be the one bearing witness at the crossroads. It doesn't really s crossroads, no. Causeway. Time will be the one bearing witness at the causeway. Yeah, I really like that. Right, I want to talk about this causeway thing because it has actually sparked my imagination. Um, a few weeks ago, one of my very good friends, Dee Kiblahan. If you're watching Dee, yeah, rock and roll man. <laughs> he came down to the studio because he had written a song and he wanted to record it. In his song, there was a lyric in it that I found very interesting. In it, he says that he first saw this girl at the castle gate. 
anyone listening to that song might think it was sort of Game of Thronesy or uh, some kind of fantasy lyric that he met this girl at the Castle Gate. But Castle Gate is actually a place in our hometown, Derry. So he literally meant that he met her at the Castle Gate, which is a location in our city centre. And I really liked that. I liked how, in one way, it seemed very pretentious and very fantasy-driven, but at the same time, it was lit- literally grounded in a down-to-earth, everyday lyric. And that's what I sort of feel about this causeway. In these lyrics now, we could see causeway as being some kind of ethereal future place. But I'm also thinking, I'm from Northern Ireland, and one of the most famous places in Northern Ireland is the Giant's Causeway. It's a place on the north coast where volcanic rocks go down into the sea in perfect hexagons. In one way, we're talking about time will bear witness at the causeway, in other words, at the end of time or some future destination. But it could also just be that I'm standing at the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland and thinking about my life. So... There's two different levels of reading the lyrics, which is quite interesting. Now, I want to get this bit recorded now so that I don't forget it, and then we'll move on to try and write the bridge and the pre-chorus. I have a series of acoustic guitar videos that I also do where I play acoustic versions of heavy metal songs, and quite often I get asked about how the acoustic is set up because people think it sounds quite good. Let's have a look. So the first thing I use is just the unplugged Chris Lord Algae. You can see I put plenty of treble on the acoustic guitar. I've got some compression, two different types of reverbs, a room reverb and a tight reverb, and I've the slap back turned down quite low. I'm not using any of the pre-delay settings or anything. But more importantly, I plug the acoustic in. I don't mic it up. It's just plugged in. In order to take out the honkiness of that, I use this EQ setting. Now, I've actually stolen this EQ setting. I had the demo of Smart EQ. And I ran my acoustic through that and let Smart EQ fix up the sound of the acoustic. And then I sort of copied the basic EQ setting that it suggested. And it created this nice, scooped, sparkly acoustic guitar sound that I always use now. I've tapped on the tempo here for what I'm playing and I've got 68 BPM. So I'm going to set up a click track and I'm going to try and play the acoustic guitar parts now so that I can sing over them. Okay, and let's just double that up as well. I'm not spending too much time perfecting the acoustic guitars here because um, they really are only a scratch track and they might not even be in the final version of the song. things right maybe it's better this way just walk away time pretends to have no memory time will be the one bearing witness at the causeway So I suppose it was trying to get a nice, low, breathy kind of vocal sound at the start. We can definitely hear that this song is going to build up somewhere. It's going to be a proper power rock ballad. And I decided to triplicate the vocals for the harder line that comes in a wee bit later on. So I think we could do a little delay throw in here. So let's set this up. Delay, send. Let's hear that. Better this way. Just walk away. Perfect. I've been thinking quite a lot recently about my reliance on pitch correction and vocals. It's something that artists have struggled with for years and nowadays pitch correction is so easy and so available that everybody uses it and possibly overuses it. I would love certain strategies to be less reliant on it and one of the things I hear in older bands that are very good at, at pitching themselves live is they have a vocal style that is sort of a little bit gone out of fashion nowadays because when things are auto-tuned or melodied, they tend to have a straight-ahead, perfect note to them. 
But a lot of older singers, the kind of David Bowie's and the Pink Floyd's, I hear them singing in a very glissando kind of style where they slide past the note and don't stay on the note long enough for you to ever register that it's out of tune. Um, what kind of idea? Hello. Is there anybody in there? I'm exaggerating a bit here for effect. Just not if you can hear me. Is there anybody home? It's quite difficult to recognize that as being in tune or out of tune because it never stays on any note long enough. I'm going to try that a wee bit. Try, Of course, what I just did there now is a comedy version of it because that's far too exaggerated. I want to try a wee bit of that and see if maybe I don't need as much pitch correction on my voice in this part of the song. Plus, it's also quite um, authentic to the way Pink Floyd sound, singing in that glissando -y kind of style. I do think in our little track... It feels like we should go major next. Especially because it does this very, very dark E minor. And so we've gone up. We've gone up a little bit. We were down based around here. And now we've gone up a, a sixth. So we're moving up in the vocal register. And with the change to C major as well, it feels like a bit of a lift in the song. I keep accidentally doing the E minor there for some reason. I'm stuck on E minor. But yeah, I like that. And you know, it sort of feels like... Maybe it's really stupid, but um, talk through every idea anyway, no matter how stupid it was. Once upon a time there was a... Something, I keep hearing that in my head. I don't know if it's really stupid or if I really like it. Once upon a time... Na -na -na. Let's see if we can write some lyrics for that. Okay, so we have Once Upon a Time. I think I might want to try and use that, but not necessarily say Once Upon a Time, but something very similar. Once there was a man who... I'm sort of telling a little story here. So what did he do and what did he learn? Once there was a man who staked his claim Preparing for a storm and never Nice. Once there was a man who staked his claim Preparing for a storm that never came So when I looked at claim and came, I thought of another rhyme, which would be rain, and we had already mentioned storm. So it sort of came together quite easily. Once there was a man who staked his claim, preparing for a storm that never came. He sheltered from the rain, but the blue skies remained. It kind of reminds me of the recent, probably it's been playing in the back of my mind, but recently I was watching a Netflix documentary about preppers in America. These guys who have nuclear bunkers and are prepared for Armageddon. They're stocked up with all the weapons and food and equipment that they would need. But what do those guys do when they come to the end of their life and it never happened? The metaphor that I'm trying to strike here is that maybe that's a bit like going out on a sunny day with an umbrella and it never rains all day. So what was the point in the umbrella? I can sort of hear an idea where the, the chords are going up and up stepwise until eventually we reach the key that we're going to be in for the chorus. Yeah, I like D minor there. Up stepwise. D 
seven. And then gives us the big A minor then for the for the chorus. So once there was a man who staked his claim Nearing for a storm that never came He sheltered from the rain But the blue skies remained I think the vocal melody pretty much informed what the lyrics should be here. But I think I sort of stumbled across an idea about doing things that are bad for you and continuing to do them. Like that old saying, if you do the same thing and expect different results. In his mind, he recognized he would not be compromised, criticized or analyzed, minimized or patronized. And then whatever the chorus is. Once there was a man who staked his claim Preparing for a storm that never came He sheltered from the rain But the blue skies remained In his mind he recognized He would not be compromised Criticized or analyzed, the patronized. This is what I came up with for the chorus To live with a contradiction To die by your own convictions Colours changing hue, coming into view Everything must change and so must you Now I like to live with a contradiction To die by your own convictions It reminds me of the guy up here Who prepared for a storm that never came Colours changing hue coming into view sounds a bit cliched. I'm going to have to work on that and make it less cliched. Everything must change and so must you. That's good. Coming into view, right? Let's go a wider field of view. I know you can't see that behind me, but you know what it says. Colours changing hue. It just seems like something I've heard a thousand times and I don't really want to do it. The changing of the hue. To live with a contradiction To die by your own convictions The changing of a hue A wider field of view Everything must change and so must you Right, so this is verse 1, and we need to sort of copy across the, the rhythm and vocal melody of this. Now, in the line, I had the will to make things right, there's no need for this next line to rhyme with it, but a line came into my mind, and I really have to use it because it's a great line. So I watch quite a lot of news media, and they were talking about investigations recently, and one of the correspondents used the phrase, disinfected by the light as a way of talking about sleaze within the government and how this investigation would shine light and disinfect the sleaze. I thought it was a great line, so I made a mental note of it when I heard it and said, I'm using that on a song. So, disinfected by the light. And we've got the line, just walk away, so just wash away. as a slight variation on that. A rhyme for away, play, as the children play. So clearly there's a bit of osmosis here with Comfortably Numb and Childhood Memories. Let's go down that road because I really want to explore that as well. So the next line would be Time Pretends to Have No Memory. And I thought a very cool variation of that would be Time Pretends to Have No Enemies. I was thinking about one of my favourite Merlion songs which is called The Space. 
and they talk about the space between people expanding a bit like the and they use the word space as a metaphor it's like the expansion of the universe that over time people become less close to each other I thought that was um, a really, really nice metaphor. And I'm thinking about it now, and I'm thinking maybe we could use this idea of looking back at our childhood and wishing we could get back there, but space between then and now has grown, and we could use entropy. The entropy in the universe is a sort of metaphor. So we got disinfected by the light as the children play, just wash away. Time pretends to have no enemies as the space between us grows, entropy arose. Obviously, the next thing we would do then would be go back to that story once upon a time, once there was a man who, and maybe tell a different story about a different man. Let's do the vocals for this first, and then move on to the next bit. Give me about a time to think about what comes next. Disinfected by the lights As the children play just wash away Time pretends I have no enemies As the space between us grows Entropy arose So after trying to sing the same vocal melody as verse 1, I realised that even though I started off very low in verse 1 so that I could build it up, now that I'm up there, it sounded like an anticlimax to go back down to the lower register again. So I wrote a new melody. It's still the same timing as the old melody, but it's different notes just to stay up in the higher register. I worked on the line, once there was a man a who, and what else could he do? Once there was a man who staked his claim, preparing for a storm that never came. So eventually I came up with this after a bit of thought about it. Once there was a man who sailed the sea, he never settled down. But he was free. No matter where he roamed, he never found a home. And then I was thinking we could just use the same part again as before for the second part. I don't think there's any need to rewrite this. I tried rewriting it using different words and all, but I'm happy with just using the same second part of the pre chorus again. Once there was a man who sailed the sea, he never settled down, but he was free. No matter where he roamed, he never found a home. Right, so all we really need to do now is copy this section up to here. So let's hear that. Disinfected by the lights As the children play Just wash away Time pretends I have no as the space between us grows, entropy arose. Once there was a man who sailed the sea, he never settled down, but he was free. No matter where he roamed, he never found a and that's all the same again then I'm not sure, I don't like that transition Because because I've changed the vocal melody now of verse 2 Space between us grows, entropy Once a while. Do you, What I really feel like doing is putting something else in between these two sections Get this away up out of the way for now because I can hear a line coming into my head. In the verses here, we talk about as the children play. And after this... Between us cross, entropy arose. We were children once ourselves. I, I think I need to write an extra little verse that goes in there before it moves in. That's also a nice thing as well, that we're not doing a straight copy of doing the whole thing again. We'll, we'll have a little variation in there and I think that might be good. So let's try and write some chords and lyrics for that section. I suppose there's not really a person alive who wouldn't talk about their childhood and say that it seemed like more innocent times. It sort of goes without saying. Childhood is a more innocent time. But it did genuinely feel like when I was growing up, the world was a more innocent place. 
Where we lived was a kind of a housing estate, but behind, out the back of our house, was completely undeveloped wilderness. We used to call it the plantain. In the summer holidays, we'd get up in the morning and we'd disappear into the, the woods and trees out there and spend our entire day having adventures. It was a very magical time. Climbing trees and sharpening sticks with pen knives and all that stuff. Quite often when I read the book Lord of the Flies, it reminds me a lot of my childhood. We were quite feral. I've been thinking about that and I've been trying to brainstorm some ideas and see if I can come up with some lyrics for that. So I've got a list of a few things that I'd like to say in the lyrics. Um, let's try and assemble it now. Right, this is kind of what I came up with here. We were children once ourselves, the scarred knees and broken bones, the tokens of adventures gone, the endless feuds and battlefields. Are we so different from those boys who ran for miles to run back home? Have we forgotten who we are? We were children once ourselves The scarred knees and broken bones The tokens of adventures gone The endless feuds and battlefields I wish I did from those boys who ran for miles to run back home Have we forgotten who we are? Right, so I think it's a case now of just joining Oh, I'm so hoarse with all the singing today I think it's just a case of copying everything from up here down now And Once there was a man who sailed the sea Okay, so I think we did it I think we might have an acoustic song written. So we can probably listen to the whole thing now. I had the will to make things right. Maybe it's better this way. Just walk away Time pretends to have no memory Time will be the one bearing witness at the causeway Once there was a man who I tried to know that the acoustic guitars throw away But I tried to do the vocals as best I could Because maybe these are the final vocals He sheltered from the rain, but the blue skies remained. In his mind, he recognized he would not be compromised, criticized or analyzed, minimized or patronized to live with a contradiction. To die. The changing of the hue, a wider field of view. Everything must change, and so must you. That's when the drums would kick in. Maybe about a guitar solo. Disinfected by the Children play, just wash away. Time pretends I have no enemies as the space between us grows. Entropy arose. We were children once ourselves. The scarred knees and broken bones, the tokens of adventures gone, the endless feuds and battlefields. Lord of the Flies. I wish so different from those boys who ran for miles to run back home. Have we forgotten who we are? 
Once there was a man who sailed the sea He never settled down but he was free No matter where he roamed He never found a home In his mind he recognized He would not be compromised Criticized or analyzed Minimized or patronized To live with a contradiction To die by your own convictions The changing of a hue A wider field of view Everything must change and so must you And then an epic guitar solo for your life Right off into the sunset Right, okay, overall It's a nice song It's very much lacking in any drama and dynamics But I think that's just because of the way it's arranged here With just an acoustic guitar When we have drums and bass guitar And guitars all coming in and out And building up on the dynamics and the drama of it I think it'll be a pretty good song I'm very happy with the lyrics and the vocal melody and how it's shaping up. So, so far, so good. Next week, I'm going to try and set this to music. Write the drum parts, write the guitar parts, write the bass guitar. And we'll be doing a lot of vintage keyboards with Leslie effects and stuff like that. All that kind of fun. So it should be very interesting next week to see what we can come up with in sort of pastiching Pink Floyd's arrangement style. So really, really very much looking forward to that. And I hope you can join me for it. Um, if you've got any ideas about the song, I'm literally recording this as we go along. So um, when you're watching this on Monday, I'll not have recorded part two yet. So uh, there's still a window for you to warn me about anything that I'm doing wrong or any ideas you have about how I should approach the rest of the song. So let me know early on in the week and I can definitely incorporate some of your ideas into the song going forward. So really very much looking forward to that. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, support the channel as much as you can. I'm an Irish guy, so I like drinking Guinness. So if you buy me a coffee, I'll spend that money on Guinness and I'll have a good night out. Thanks very much, guys, and really, really appreciate your support. You guys rock.